Well, hello, hello. I hope everybody is doing well. This is the, let me see, what month are we in now? Is this October? October the 20th. Uh, Southern Fried DNN. Uh, it's been a minute since we've been together, uh, and it's great to see all the faces and uh, placards on the on the Zoom screen there. Uh, whoop, whoop from Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> um, we uh, think it was last month and maybe the previous month. Did we skip two uh, there, Ryan, or was it just one that we skipped? We had to reschedule one, and then we skipped one. So they were pretty much back to back. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a while. It's great to see everybody again. Um, I mean, I, just because we haven't been meeting doesn't mean that nothing has been going on in the DNA community. So we've got all sorts of for sure uh, greatness to talk about tonight. With the focus kind of being on uh, a, a, a big release. I mean, it, it the numbers say that it's a minor one, but. For all practical purposes, it's a it's it's a major release. Um, so we're gonna try to do a, do a little deep dive into that tonight and kind of talk about some of the highlights of that. So let me uh, take a second to share screen and we'll go into a few. Probably should move that out of the way. Everybody able to see the uh, meetup page? Okay. Yep, you're in good shape. Excellent. Good deal then. And I need to fix my windows here just a little bit. But um, yeah, so uh, I guess we'll just kind of start out with a few um, community type announcements here. But uh, it's kind of funny because the this uh, I, I was going to, if Daniel Velatis was on here, I was going to give him a bit of credit. I was up at his place um, for about uh, three weeks or so in Canada. And uh, <laughs> I was uh, getting ready to publish a, a blog on the the uh, testing for the 9.11 release. And I started playing around. I was like, I got to create a graphic for this. You know, I got to figure out kind of what to do. And I, I had some ideas in my head and everything. And we were sitting there and <laughs> this image was supposed to be used for another blog. But um, uh, it, it, it was kind of cool. It's a composite of, <laughs> this is just a little bit of a side story, but a little, little composite here of a, uh, concert and people in it and okay that's the perfect sound effect for a concert yeah let me figure out who's who the feedback's coming from there uh, let's see okay okay i think i'm good there now um yeah so uh but it was kind of cool because it was it, it's just actually multiple images and graphics so it kind of composited together but it was really kind of neat the way it came out and uh DNM being the center stage there and 9.11 is a pretty big release. So it, it kind of warranted that kind of epic uh, type uh, type little thing there, but anyway, just a little side story. So um, I guess what is going on in the community? Um, one of the things that I have on my list and feel free to chime in if there's things that I miss here that, because uh, there's been so much going on, I guess we're kind of covering a lot from the last couple of months here, but one of the recent things, I mean, since we're in October, let's talk a little bit about Hacktoberfest. Um, usually, uh, I try to do a little bit more talking about this in the DNA community, but um, this is something that's broader in the open source community. If you're not aware of it, check out hacktoberfest.com. Um, it's sponsored by DigitalOcean and a few other sponsors like Docker and AppRite um, on this, but it's it's really kind of grown into this yearly thing where um, developers and you know people in the open source community kind of come together. They start contributing a little more probably than normal. And you get credits for doing open source work and get a cool t-shirt. I should have worn my t-shirt tonight. I got one uh, year that they did it. It's like my favorite shirt because it's just so comfy. Um, but uh, yeah, every year you either get a, a t-shirt or some swag stuff or some uh, planetary, you know, kind of whatever floats your boat on that. But it's really fun. Um, new, be involved in any kind of open source platform. Of course, DNN um, can be one of those um, or some of the open source community modules or, you know, whatever, you know, is in that world. But I encourage everybody to check this out and take a little bit of time in October to see how you can contribute to uh, to various projects out there, you know, even if it's small type stuff. I mean, every, every, every little bit helps. So it's... Uh, Really nice um, to be involved in that. 
one of the things that you'll probably notice like in the, the DNM platform um, repo or some of the other uh, DNM community modules will have a label um, on some of the issues there that are like a help wanted label. And any issue like that are kind of like low hanging fruit and be less of a, you know, kind of a, a learning curve to, to be able to contribute in those areas. So that's a quick way to kind of sort through some of those issues and see if it's something that you um, kind of is up your alley to be able to, to, to contribute on. Um, but a lot of the repros, it's not just something specific to us, but the, they encourage using that uh, particular issue label across different repos. So any um, project that you're following or uh, a part of, maybe you're a user of a, a open source project that's out there outside of our community and, you know, want to kind of look and see how you can help or, you know, you've always wanted that to do X or Y and go out there and see if you can help, you know, or at least help uh, contribute to that, that path. But it's a neat, neat little website they've got together today um, on this that, I thought it was really kind of cool, the registration process and everything. They they seem to outdo themselves every single year. A lot of fun. Um, is, is anybody uh, had any good Hacktober story uh, out there so far? I personally have not done squat <laughs> as far as contributing yet, but it is on my list for this weekend to try to spend some time. Has anybody had any uh, um, stories they want to share about their involvement? No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> um, first time, um, first I've heard of it. Oh, really? It's it's really. Yeah. Cool. I mean, this is something I've been. I look forward to when it gets close to October. I'm like, kind of start geeking out. It's like, I mean, you're either <laughs> nice. or you're not, right? You know, but yeah. it's kind of neat to have a focus month. You know, of where uh, I don't know. It's just yeah. elevated awareness of open source initiatives and so forth and and, and you know other people are, are contributing at the same time so it kind of energizes you exactly exactly and they, they i just all... i just like the retro graphics on their website it's very retro and you know our scrolling marquee and like uh 1980s graphics very cool reminds me of uh just a modern day kind of uh old school computer, you know, sci-fi movie or something, <laughs> you know, a hacking movie. Um, I wonder if they got it from, what's that movie? Uh, the um, war, uh, war Games, was that it? it yeah, me of kind good of movie. The look of that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, when you, when you uh, register out here, of course, your GitHub username gets associated um, with your activity and so forth. And that's kind of how they, how they, how they track. Once you get involved that you can get little badges for stuff and, you know, you can participate a little bit or a lot, you know, and reap the benefits. They even have events that are focused on Hacktoberfest. We, if we were more organized and more available on our end, we would have some events that were focused completely on, uh, Hacktoberfest as well. But, um, yeah, a lot of fun and, um, uh, Get a cool t-shirt or plant a cool tree. Um, that would be awesome. Um, one other thing is, um, and Ryan or Mark or uh, anybody that's involved in DNA Summit may want to mention this coming up because I know I haven't seen a whole lot of social um, messaging coming out about this, but the, the upcoming conference in uh, February of uh, 2023 is set um, to be another, you know, online event. And um, the site's been updated out here to have all the appropriate information. And the uh, early bird, um, you might want to try to take advantage of that because it'll end um, on December the 9th. So you have a little bit of time, but not a lot of time. Um, save yourself $70 mm -hmm. there if, um, if you want to be involved in that this year. And I think they have a call for speakers out as well. Um, yeah. Let's see here, call for speakers. I'll my, uh, yeah, one of you guys I'll mention, talk about this a little bit. Uh, I'll mention a couple of things that are uh, exciting to me about uh, what we're putting together for this DNN Summit. Uh, so like David's mentioning, uh, first off, uh, Call for Speakers is open and it closes faster than you might think. Um, so it closes here in the first weekend of November and that might as well be tomorrow. So 
we have a proud history in the DNA community of everyone submitting their sessions the last day or maybe asking and nicely if they can submit them two days after it's already expired. So um, if, if anyone's listening who's in our usuals uh, for presenting, then I encourage you to please try to get in there and do it early. Uh, post your session concepts. You don't have to have them fully fled, fleshed out, uh, but if you can put together the outline and uh, submit that, then that would be fantastic. If you're not in the regulars and you haven't presented before, but you've got an idea of a session, some you know bit of DNN corner that you really feel passionate about and that you enjoy teaching or training about, but you see it rarely discussed. Um, you know, I, I give my brother Dustin as a good example. Um, he uh, kind of bemoans that there aren't enough sessions for database focused DNN database information um, at conventions like this. And so my encouragement to him is, well, make a session about databases. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about performance. Let's talk about those things, their database side. Uh, so if you have some good ideas like that, put together a session, uh, put it out there. We'd love to have you um, present something new to the audience of, of all of us in the community who uh, would uh, love to see you present. A uh, couple of other things about um, the conference this year. Um, we are still virtual. This is the second year uh, virtual in a row. And uh, one of the things that we are working on are swag packages uh, that is right there on the screen. Um, we will have a t-shirt. We will have a few other items that we are sending out. If you purchase your tickets in time, especially before the early bird, then I personally will be shipping them out to you. Um, so the idea is these are uh, creature comforts for you in your office while you are um, attending the conference virtual. So they are desktop items, they are shirts, they are um, mugs and things like that for you to, uh, to enjoy and celebrate uh, knowing that you've gotten that package out to you um, and you can enjoy it while you're at the conference virtually. So swag packages, that is new for this year. And uh, me personally, that's one of the things I enjoy about being in person with everyone is a little tchotchke and swag and uh, things like that to get from sponsors. Uh, number two item I'll mention is that um, there is an ever-changing or evolving uh, situation with recordings for videos um, in that uh, I think the very first year we used Hopin, there were some issues with the recordings, the next time it worked, but for a limited time. Uh, now uh, we really have a good foundation for recordings. So um, your attendance at the event and, and your ticket is gonna be even more valuable now at this point because you will be able to uh, attend the sessions that you're part of, but then you'll also be able to go back and watch every session um, because they are all being recorded and will be presented. So um, if you have to, uh, convince someone that uh, Dean and Summon is a great value for you and is a great benefit, uh, then this is the screen that will give you those details because for sure um, you get extra benefits even more than in person because you can see every single session. Fantastic. Um, Mark, do you have anything to, to add to any of that? or? Ryan does an excellent job. No, I don't think I have anything to add. Thank you, Ryan. Awesome. Yeah, well, that's great. Um, it's always good to to get together, uh, even if it is virtual. Uh, of course, there's some elements of the virtual that I really love, and and, and the fact that you get to talk to people that would probably have never shown up at a uh, in person event. So that's that's really neat to to be able to to run into folks that you don't normally get a chance to cross paths with. So that's one of the big benefits of the uh, the virtual. I am hoping to be able to submit some sessions, but I, that deadline is really soon. I don't think anybody, I mean, who, who has actually heard about the call for speakers yet? Because I have not <laughs> until, uh, until I uh, put it on the website. Be nice to, to get that posted out there because I got a feeling it won't, be a whole lot of submissions. Uh, so if you know anyone mm -hmm. that might be interested, please spread the word, um, you know, um, and, and get it out and get the word out on this because uh, it'd be nice to get get a lot of submissions. 
Okay. Um, I, I guess let me open it up for just a second to see if there's anything in particular, you know, that's happened in and around the DNA community over the last two months that you'd like to uh, highlight or, or mention. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to probably just jump right into the, uh, to the DNN 911 uh, review here. Hey, I'll jump in and do my usual too sexy um, thing. If you guys aren't paying attention, the too sexy major enhancements and revisions and bug fixes have been absolutely amazing since they uh, came back from their little vacation they do every year. So um, there's a ton to learn. I mean, I'm quite frankly, I'm overwhelmed with it. I'm having trouble adapting to all the new ways to do things that are obviously better. But um, it's worth digging in and learning. Everything I've touched so far is amazing. Even just switching stuff over so you're using image flow. Um, there's benefits. Your cache sizes are smaller. Things are operating faster. Um, all kinds of stuff. Little things that you don't notice. The only thing that's lagging still is documentation. There's quite a few things I want to learn, and there's still no docs especially related to the whole new settings stack, which I think is kind of exciting, but I've barely touched it. No docs. And Jeremy, what are anyhow, some of the- Not complaining, very excited. So I guess the last yeah. May, uh, long-term support release was seven, uh, 14, bleh, if I could speak, 14.7.4. Um, since then, what are some of the, some of the highlights that you've seen that, you, that interest you the most? The ones that are, um, they're basically the polishing and finishing of things like the formulas are really becoming pretty useful and advanced. Now you can mm -hmm. actually do things like read data. Uh, they've even made the syntax that you used in C Sharp and Razor on the back end nearly identical. So you can move stuff into your JavaScript in your formulas and literally just access data the way you do in C sharp. There's just amazing little things like that are, that are really nice. They've also, uh, I mentioned image flow. Um, what else is in there that I've been playing with? Uh, you put me on the spot cause I'm like all excited about this stuff, but I don't have good examples. Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to put it on. The spot. Oh, if you're not sorry. using them, the, the, the kits are just amazing. Being able to do kit dot whatever, those are fantastic. If you haven't paid attention to that, those are documented well. So start using those kits. Uh, I'm not familiar with that. What is, what is that, Jeremy? Kits. He's bundled together all kinds of things you used to do into this thing called a kit. Okay. Um, let me see if I can find a link to share. Hold on a sec. See, and by the way, shit. while while Jeremy's looking for that, um, there an idea came up. Um, I don't know, uh, maybe three weeks or so ago, of uh, kind of doing a, a, a meet up every once in a while, just just for two sexy users, you know, just to be able to kind of get together and, and share some things. And it is on my list to try to see if I can coordinate that. So if you are interested in that, post something in the chat or in the DNA community Slack and just let know your interest. Cause like, I know there's a few of us that are all, always talking about things uh, too sexy and, but it'd be nice to know if there really is more interest than just that. And then we can really kind of turn into that, into a, you know, um, a little more focused. Yeah, I, on that. that'd be great. You know, I'll be there. Um, so I posted the link in the chat so you can just see a quick example of how the service kits work. Um, oh, the if you just scroll kit. down slightly, there's an example right on the screen of turning, you know, three or four lines of code right there. That was pretty common for the last year. And it's now just that. Oh, neat. Okay. And then if you scroll down further, the other big one that I've actually used a lot on a recent project, I've converted all my uh, toolbar stuff over to the toolbar builder. And basically for those of you that like um, um, Razor Blade and building your HTML that way, he's used the same style of Fluent API to build those toolbars. And for the first time ever, it's actually easy and useful and it's kind of exciting. 
because I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but when you use toolbars in Too Sexy, there's like four different versions of the documentation over the years. Yeah. I heard someone laugh. Was that David? Yeah. Yeah. And and like you, so I have code from 2018 to now that does the same thing, and there's four completely different versions, and none of it you retain in your head. But this toolbar builder is very logical. It's much easier to learn and it's documented and I highly recommend paying attention to it. So if you like to put those hover buttons on your page, now you have control of them properly. So this is more for the quick edit stuff or is this in replacement of tag? Toolbar? Yeah. No okay. This is the replace. This is what to use instead of tag toolbar. Oh, okay. Yep. Have not even looked into this. So, uh, they yeah. It. And, 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 yep. And it's, um, and what I'm really trying to say is besides the new stuff, it's also stabilizing quickly. We've had a dot nine, 14 dot nine, 14 dot 10. Um, there's probably going to be a 14, 11 or 12 or something soon, because I think David, you saw, he was asking or made a comment on one of the posts of yours from a while back about, um, uh, filling in the page information. Do you remember that mm -hmm. one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one, I, I I need that because, well, I have a bunch of reasons for wanting that. I hope he does something with it. Yeah, we started using Okay, that. enough <laughs> too sexy stuff for one meetup. No, that's cool, Just, though. Um, it's can, like, I ask, can I ask one quick question? That's all this neat stuff that's coming out was too sexy. And I was just wondering, when you've developed stuff with, say, old versions of the content stuff, does it all end up getting messed up? or they could, uh, no, uh, no, they've done a, I would say they've done a great job. I have upgraded all the way to 13 dot whatever on my oldest big project that has a lot of content app stuff and nothing has broken. Um, oh. I'm a, I, I freely admit I'm afraid to take that project up to, up to version 14, but I do plan to do it in a sandbox sometime before the end of the year and make sure, but in general, they have done a really good job keeping old stuff working. And part of it has to do with the way that they do uh, their razor pages and the includes and the usings and inherits at the top of your file. So to pick up, for example, the version 14 stuff, you're going to switch your, what is it, you're using from razor 12 to razor 14. And because of that, the old stuff doesn't break. And I'm sure somewhere down the road, he's going to eventually turn off the old compatibility things, but um, it'll be a while before then, and it'll be a big announcement when it happens. So in general, uh, they've done a really good job not breaking things. Not perfect. I can actually tell you there is one thing that broke in the content app somewhere around 10.20 or 10.21. And you had to rewrite some code, but that's the only glaring one that happened. Yeah, because I agree with you that there's so many different versions of things. When you look at what you've done and you look back at well, what the heck have I done? If I could consolidate I everything in a mod, sort of the most sort of modern approach, that would make life so much easier. Yeah, I look at my old code and I'm like, God, I want to use all the new stuff to do that. But the client isn't going to pay me to just rewrite it to make it nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, uh, we don't really use the content app ever anymore, but um, I can tell you that we've upgraded every client site that we have control over that thing to seven or 14.7.4 and have had no problems whatsoever. Yeah, similar experience here. All all of the upgrades have been great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to looking into some of this newer stuff, uh, Jeremy. Thanks for highlighting this because you're right. There's been so many changes; it's almost uh, almost mind boggling uh, to see how fast things are evolving. Which is good and it's bad, right? You know, it's good in the sense that it's evolving, but it's like, whew, reminds me of like the Angular world or something, you know, or the React world. It's just changing like the wind. So. Uh, Thanks for highlighting that. Are, yeah. are there any other okay. uh, activity in the community that anybody would like to highlight? Now's the time.
I'd like, I think we should uh, compliment the guys that do DNN backup on how quickly and ahead of time they fix their problem uh, that was going to happen with DNN 911. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're talking about uh, the uh, Eva Tiva stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What they problem was going to happen? Um, was, something uh, about they, David can describe it better, but they hadn't registered DLL the right way or something. Yeah, it was just a method they were using to instantiate something was a, a bit. I mean, a lot of people do it, but not really the yeah. right way. Um, and they were able to. What, was it the Newton soft DLL? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Then I know what you're talking about. It's always it's always Newton soft. Every <laughs> time is. I've had a yep. problem, ninety percent of the time it's Newton soft. I agree. Yeah, and it, it good deal. Good to know. Congratulations, uh, even even then. Yeah. Yeah. They did Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I'm glad that a lot of the vendors are paying attention. You know, to what's going on and and all that. Um, um, for the most part, everybody was. You know, all the major ones were were at least aware of things going on, and nine eleven was able to get things uh, resolved. I think there, there could be some few lingering things here or there, but uh, that I haven't seen anything major. I could also add that it's also nice to say nine eleven out loud and not, you know, get that instant depression, and instead have something positive to talk about. <laughs> yeah. you, you just you just stole my stole my thunder. Yeah, I'm actually we, going to say we, that. Right I feel, here. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we no, said it about okay. six times, and I was thinking the same thing that we thought positive things for. 9-11 instead of uh, not positive. So that's, <laughs> and on that note, thing. let's transition to the main topic. Yeah, I mean, mm. does anybody have anything else uh, that, that that's worthy of uh, note mentioning here? Mention here. I know there's always a lot of stuff going on, so it's uh, uh, hard to keep up with everything all the time. So I admittedly have been kind of buried in work world for for a while now, and not. Paying a whole lot of attention, other than with nine eleven stuff. So I guess we'll uh, go on going into this. Um, what I'm going to use here is really the blog post that I put out here for testing, kind of as a guide because it is actually a good blog. It's right on the dnncommunity.org under resources blogs, and uh, it's fairly recent um, when we were going through the release candidates. Uh, but it's a good blog to to really highlight the major areas of focus for 9.11. Um, for those that don't know, I mean, most of the, the effort around 9.11.0 release has been to finally, really, I mean, like really, <laughs> get rid of Telric um, in the sense of when you do a clean install of 9.11.0 now, you will have no traces whatsoever of Telric. This is a good thing. Um, so that, that's the first time we've been able to say that. And that's really the reason why, um, semantically speaking, this probably should have been a 10.0.0 release. Uh, but for a plethora of reasons, it was it was decided to kind of uh, break semantic version a bit on this and, and go with a 9.11.0 release. Um, so that we could really, really get there quicker um, in, in, in some ways, and also to avoid a bit of, can't avoid every bit of confusion, but it, it would have been kind of tough doing a 10.0.0 release and then turning right back around and doing an 11.0.0 release um, so quickly. Um, a lot of larger organizations are slower to move on the upgrades, so um, there was a, really a, a desire to incentivize the upgrade even more so um, because of the security aspects of things. So a lot of the activity around this was really about the removal of Telric. Now, there's a lot of benefit that came besides that, um, but that was really the focus area and a lot of other things just kind of filtered in as that time period was happening. It was a, a big effort um, for a lot of this. and. It seems maybe from an outsider looking in that the removal of Telric should be fairly straightforward and simple. And I get it, you know, um, but 
it was so deeply rooted in DNA. And how long have we been hearing that, oh, you know, this gets rid of Telric here, or this gets rid of Telric here. There were little snippets, you know, in areas where it was sort of removed, but it just really wasn't really removed. You know, it was just partially removed. Um, and that's happened for years now. Um, and this is the first release that's really removing it. So it's, it, it's a great release from that standpoint. By the way, feel free to ask any questions as we go through here, and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Um, at some point, I'm hoping that Daniel Velatis will be able to join as well because uh, he was supposed to be my right-hand man on this and uh, kind of back me up where I fumble um, through this because he obviously knows a lot about some of the more inner workings of things. So um, I guess one of the one of the biggest areas that – needed attention in order to do the 9.11 release and really remove the biggest dependency that we had on Telric was in the area of the digital asset uh, manager. So on that, it the core feature itself was totally dependent on Telric controls. So that had to be rewritten from scratch. Well, you may be saying, well, it kind of, was in 9.8, right? Well, a little bit of the history here for those that are interested in it. Um, DNA Corp um, contributed uh, a partial, yeah, well, I guess what, what you could probably say to this, it was an early version of what eventually became the resource manager or whatever they call it, file manager or asset manager in Evoke. Um, but it wasn't exactly that. It was just one of the earlier versions of that. They contributed that code down to us, you know, so they didn't have evoke specific stuff in it. And that's what got built into a module eventually to so that with the 9.8.0 release, you were able to optionally remove Telric from your instances. And you, you unless You've been under a rock. You've probably seen those instructions and used them for the, for the past while um, in trying to you know remove Telric from your sites. But um, that's that's clearly documented and everything out on DNN Docs uh, for that. And that was the first iteration of not using that module. However, if you ever use that to any degree especially on sites that have a lot of assets, you know, on them are a lot of folders and files. Um, it, it was clunky at best to actually use. So it, it was pretty obvious because of the technology stack that was used as well as the lacking in the user experience side of it. Um, that we really needed to rewrite it from scratch and not try to leverage um, what was, what was contributed, um, to us. So, um, Daniel Velatis mostly, and I contributed some on this. Um, we rewrote the resource manager using a very modern approach, uh, to, to things. And you'll probably see some cues in here from, if you've dealt any with like OneDrive, the experience in the browser, you know, with OneDrive, a lot of, the user experience is kind of inspired from that um, because it's fairly intuitive um, on a lot of this stuff. So like right, right click contextual menus, you know, when you're highlighting something or you've selected a folder or selected a file, there's an awareness and the toolbar up at the top changes and gives you the actions that are appropriate for whatever is selected or whatever you're doing. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So um, this is rewritten using web components um, that are just pure JavaScript, HTML, CSS. So there's no dependencies on anything other than JavaScript and HTML and CSS, um, which makes it incredibly awesome from a maintenance standpoint moving forward. Um, one of the challenges that we have in DNN is that with all the persona bar modules and so forth. And this was true also for the first rendition of the resource manager. It, it, it's written in React with a lot of dependencies on that framework, as well as the tooling that is used to 
to use that. So we don't have any of that clutter in this. There's no framework dependencies. It's just pure. Um, we use a, um, a tooling called Stencil. And uh, this uh, was created by the fine folks at Ionic. Um, if you're in the mobile app development world, it's a great platform for that kind of thing. But they, they created something called Stencil that helps you create these web components. So it's really an authoring tool, if, if you will, that follows similar reactive patterns like you would find in React. Um, but in the end of the day, what's output from that is just a JavaScript file. And then you consume the various components uh, that you want to use. So I know we've talked about this before, but I'll mention it for those that have not been been here whenever we've talked about this, but this is a project uh, called DNN Elements, and this was core to being able to even build the resource manager. So without going into a ton of detail, just know that there is an entire library out here of these web components that were used uh, to be able to build resource managers. So it becomes a very good, um, very good kind of case study, if you will, on how to use web components within DNN because anybody can use these elements from DNN elements and they'll eventually be a part of DNN um, 11, I'm sorry, DNN 10 as well, where you could consume them even easier um, within that context. But all of these components got, got built to be able to build applications like you see with the resource manager. So you can use those components in your own custom modules. And we've actually been using these for quite some time in, in custom um, uh, modules for DNN um, and really does help with the ongoing maintenance of those because upgrades and things like that become so trivial, you know, from a dependency uh, and security standpoint, because you can upgrade those security dependable alerts, you know, really quick without having to worry about it breaking stuff and all that, because there's just hardly any dependencies. So that's a little bit more of the uh, back David, we have a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, help me uh, help me know about some of that stuff, because I'm not able to watch that very if well. If you'd like, yeah. We, yeah, can, okay. we can hold it if not, but it was it was a good segue or time period to oh, mention. Um, Helene was asking about the resource manager and asking if when you're doing the upgrade to 9.11, are you going to have that new resource manager um, or do you have to install it as a module or take actions? And I typed a little bit about the Telerik, the last few steps of the Telerik removal process. Do you want to talk about that for just a moment? Yeah, so if you do a clean install of 9.11.0, you're going to get the resource manager because there, there is no digital asset manager in a clean install of 9.11.0. If you're upgrading an older site, then, and you'll, we'll cover this here in just a little bit in more detail, but there are basically three different scenarios that you can run into where you have Telric present on your existing upgrade, you know, your, 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 your existing instance, and it's used, then you will run through this scenario. If you have Telric, but you're not using it, then that will be another scenario for your upgrades. And then finally, if you don't have Telric at all, then you'll you'll just get basically like you would get in a in a clean install. So there's really three different upgrade scenarios um, that you would get slightly different experience. But if you choose, like in the case of the resource manager or the digital asset manager, if you choose to remove Telric, like this situation where you've got Telric presence, but 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 it's not really used in other other modules and so forth it will replace the digital asset manager with resource manager, the new resource manager. So I hope that answers the question. And I'll, um, I'll also do a demo of some of the stuff here in just a little bit too, if we have a little bit of time um, on this. So that this is obviously one of the biggest um, new features, if you will, uh, on this. And it really, it takes into account a lot of the user feedback that we had on the original pass at the resource manager. And, you know, like simple things like everything was like a big grid view before. <laughs> there was no list option to give a little bit lower profile. 
um, the searching was clunky, the sorting wasn't existent, um, you know, that kind of stuff. A lot of that has been addressed in here. Um, is it perfect? No, not by any means. Um, still a lot of room for improvement, but we did achieve feature parity with what the digital asset manager had. So that was the the real goal is that's the day one. We've got to have the features that we had before so that we really can get rid of it um, completely and not make it just optional. So as I mentioned, digital asset manager is just not a part of 9.11.0 on clean installs. And um, so that's just something you want to keep in mind because it may lead to training needs, you know, either internally for your administrators or if you're um, if you have clients that are that are using this feature and they have administrative access. Um, mm -hmm. It is implemented as a module. So just like you could do with Digital Asset Manager, you could put that module on a page instance that um, that you provide access to non-administrators, right? You know, or certain security roles. You can still do that with the, the new resource manager as well. Um, the other thing too, some of the little more hidden, less known features like using social groups and so forth that also, to our knowledge, is all working uh, just fine, like you could do with a uh, digital asset manager. Some other highlights um, here, and if I'm missing any questions, let me know. Just feel free to chime in, interrupt me. Um, yep. The install wizard has changed, you know, quite a bit in the sense that, you know, we, we're, we're past the day and age where the default needs to be not SSL. I mean, every website needs SSL now. So there's a, there's some new experience around that for the default configuration. Um, so that's something to be aware of, as well as whether or not pages are secured or not. So there's some interesting logic that's, that's in all this, but the whole goal here was so that when you install DNN now, by default, it is a secure installation. Um, this also will save you a lot of time. I know people that have been around for a while probably are using tricks like, you know, to quickly go in and do this via the database directly, um, where you just set all your pages to secure, you know, just for the database script instead of, you know, having to do that. But if you haven't been doing that or have been doing that manually page by page, this will save you a ton of time because by default, it will be set to secure. So that's good to, good to for that to be the case right out of the box um, and should save you a bit of time on the configuration side of things for, for SSL. But it is something to be aware of because you may be, <laughs> may be uh, in a situation where, oh my gosh, you know, uh, it's not, it's not working. Uh, well, maybe, maybe it's because of the SSL, right? <laughs> so I'm um, just kind of having awareness of that. So I would definitely test through those scenarios and make sure you're aware of how it is uh, to be done. Um, let's see, the, there's some changes that happened to the uh, templates, the default and the blank templates. If you, if you use those in DNN, uh, when you're, when you're installed, of course, you, you have to use one or the other, you know, if you're building a completely new fresh site, you're probably using the blank template, but both those templates were updated to change a bit of the behavior out of box. Um, for so long, there was actually some, you know, security holes in, in essence, because by default, the user profile pages and activity feed, you know, the messages, mainly the my profile is where the security, you know, challenges come in, but by default, those were visible to all users whether or not you had registration turned on or not. So now by default, user registration is um, set to none by default. So if you do need user registration, you're gonna have to go in and actually change that in site settings. Um, and as well as all of the other related pages that are activity feed, my profile, the friends page and messages, 
they will all by default be set to only be visible by registered users. So now really with the upgrade scenarios, we briefly talked about this a few minutes ago, but there's really three scenarios that you're gonna run into. Um, first of being uh, the, you have Telric in the instance. So you, whether you tried to remove manually or not, there's some leftover something there, you know, that has Telric and it's actually being used somewhere. This scenario here is probably the easiest one to probably misunderstand a bit. Um, but we try to make it as clear as possible here, but um, hopefully everybody can see this. That's as big as that image is, but I could probably zoom in a little bit more um, without pixeling yeah, too much. Okay, good. Um, so, you know, in this case, we're going from 9.10.2 to 9.11. In, in this case, it was 0.1. This was just to show example of what that might look like in the future, but it would do this in 9.11.0 as well. But there's some helpful information in the in the upgrade wizard here to let you know about the security center, you know, all the bulletins that because we're about. Oh, let's see, let's just pull that up because you may not be aware of where that is now, but on the DNA community. Dot org under resources and official DNN security center. This used to be on dnnsoftware.com. There is still a security center out there, but this is now the official one. Um, and there were, I think, 12, if I remember correctly, um, security bulletins that were published. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, 14 of them that were that will apply to 9.10.1 one and above. So um, right now, uh, and the, by the way, this is a lot better now. If you haven't seen it in a while, there's a lot more detail associated with each security bulletin. But these are all the things that were that are addressed in 9.11. And it'll let you know which, which versions were affected by this particular um, security issue. So now back over to the screenshot if I can get back to it. Um, it'll quickly point you to that page so that you can really get more details about the security aspects and vulnerabilities that were in the version that you were you were on, as well as a list of all the DLLs that Telric was detected to have, you know, some level of dependency with. But at this point, there's nothing that's going to happen automatically because it's being used. So the recommendation is go ahead and upgrade, but know that you need to go through the manual Telric removal steps um, that have been published since 9.8.0. They still would apply in this situation. So it's the same um, steps that you would want to, to take um, through that. But, you know, the, the goal really would be you know, if I were in issues, I'd try my best to remove Telric before the upgrade, just to kind of avoid this scenario altogether. Um, that way you would know that you would know you'd have a little bit of a uh, a warm fuzzy, you know, going through it that, oh, okay, I've removed all the usages of it. So like, even if I had a custom module that, you know, I knew had Telric in it and I went ahead and replaced it with something else or updated that module to not have Telric anymore. Uh, dependency, then when I get to, you know, upgrade to 9.11, I would run into probably this scenario, you know, where Telric's present, but it's not used. And then in this scenario, make this a little bigger. Um, it's the same type messaging. However, in this situation, you have the choice of going ahead and removing Telric, you know, letting DNN actually uh, try to remove Telric everywhere that it can, right? Or just leave your site as is, and you're you're accepting that risk. So this would be a more preferred scenario than having a known usage of Telric. So it, you know, if I were in your shoes, and I was in this scenario, and I saw these lists, that I would use this as a cue to go and try to figure out how to resolve those issues before I went any further. 
usually you can tell by the DLL name what it's what it belongs to, you know, what what module it's related to or what library it's related to and gives you at least a clue as to where to look and and kind of know where to go. So if it's something custom then you can contact that that developer that did that or uh, maybe it's a commercial uh, module that you bought a long time ago that was that's still dependent on Telric. And then the last scenario, kind of the ideal scenario, is like, oh, you've already removed Telric. There's no knowledge that DNN has of any Telric presence on here. It's just a normal upgrade for you, and you upgrade that. And that's pretty straightforward. So those are the changes to the upgrade wizard. And a lot of, you know, I'll just say magic behind the scene is happening to try to detect everything that we could possibly think of, right, um, that, that could still be there and um, have a dependency on Telric. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good um, in, 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 in what it is. Um, so you could still find scenarios where it wasn't detected. And, um, you know, but that that is usually going to be when... Um, let's just say uh, maybe you're using not the DNN version of Telric, but you're using some other, you know, like you're literally using the newer version of Telric <laughs> that has nothing to do with DNN. And, you know, you might say, well, yeah, I need that there. I know that that's there and I'm okay with that, that because it's up to date and it's not having the same security vulnerabilities or whatever. But those are a little bit more um, rogue scenarios, edge cases, I should say. Um, any questions about the upgrade scenarios and kind of what you might would run into? One thing that I will mention here, you know, like in, in the blog mentioned that this is a good way to test that there's still two known DNN community modules that are Telric dependent, and that's the FAQ and the events modules. So, you know, if you wanted to um, do some local testing with this and kind of see these experiences, just to kind of know what to look for, those are quick and easy modules to install so that you can kind of create these test scenarios and see how it handles it um, uh, through that. So that might be helpful to you. The next area is um, one on which I'll just kind of, I'm going to gloss over just a little bit because I'm not intimately familiar with a lot of the stuff that happened here, but I will say that in CK Editor, you'll want to check any plugins that you may have been using uh, in that because you may find that they either don't exist there anymore because of they were removed for some security issue. I think Spell Checker was one of these if I remember correctly. Um, but you may just want to check if you installed any kind of CK editor plugins yourself that wasn't part of DNA core. You may want to just check to make sure they work okay um, in the because there were some updates that were made to the CK editor mm. and the provider associated with it. Ryan, was that you that you all had used some plugins or, so, or maybe I'm thinking of somebody else? For sure, yeah. Um, I uh, enjoy tricking out the CK editor um, to add back in some of the plugins that used to be present. And um, we had someone on 2021, maybe the end of 2020, um, came and gave us a good presentation on that. I'm trying to recall who that was. And... Uh, that was my first thought was, okay, we'll go back and check on those things. And then that'll be a post DNN 9-11 update uh, that we can have a few months from now. Yeah, some of the code corrections, some of the image media import, um, some of those were the main things that I relied on. So far, have you found out that most of those that you had worked with still work okay? Or are you seeing some issues? Haven't uh, I actually had not paid attention at all. So either they work just fine or um, they're not instances where I have installed those. So I will ah, make a point to go take a look. That'd be cool to know. Uh, I know a lot of people still still use CK very much, you know, a lot 
Um, but gosh, I can't remember the last time we've actually used it. <laughs> so uh, many years ago. Uh, let's see. So next item is that um, Sharp Zip Lib, which is a library that's been distributed with DNN for years um, for developers to be able to use, uh, as well as DNN uses it or has in the past used it to either create zips or unzip zips. You know, like if you are uploading a zip to the digital asset manager, for instance, you could check the little box that says, you know, um, uh, extract the files after after they're uploaded. That was using behind the scenes the sharp zip lib um, or lib library, I guess is what that's short for. Um, but that is no longer distributed with DNN. And the, the main reason for that is that, well, one, we don't we want to remove as many third-party dependencies as as we can. Um, but two, now the .NET framework has evolved enough to where there's core things in the framework to do the exact same uh, tasks that previously uh, sharp zip live had been used for. So it's no longer, no longer needed or used within DNN. It is starting in 9.11.0, but if you are a module developer and have used DNN's distribution of that to make references to, you just want to be aware that you either now need to bring in your own um, dependency on that or just use the, uh, the new C sharp um, APIs to be able to do that. Or I should say ASP.NET framework APIs. Um, this is another big one as well. Um, Newton's off the, the bane of our existence, right? For so long, uh, so powerful, so awesome. But versioning with uh, Newton's off has always been a challenge because everybody wants to depend on this one. Um, it has been updated uh, to the latest version of Newton Soft JSON, which is 13.0.1. Uh, um, just because this one is so heavily used by um, module developers, both commercial and custom, um, you just want to make sure that this update has not broken uh, that. And I think that, if I remember correctly, that was one thing that was happening with the Eva Tiva, um, Jeremy. Um, on that for the backup uh, module they were able to update um, because of the way that they were pulling in that dependency. Um, it was directly from DNN instead of using their own NuGet package, I think, for it. Which is great. That will help with upgrades and in uninstallations and all kinds of things. Yep, absolutely. And as you could imagine, uh, the security analyzer has also had some improvements in it as it relates to Telric. So now you get a few more sections uh, or checks that happen in, in the security analyzer to be able to um, note whether or not Telric is installed and used or is installed and not used. And this is the same logic essentially that is being used by the upgrade wizard. Uh, so it made sense to also have that in the security analyzer so that after the fact, you could still refer back to that and not not have to go through the upgrade process again just to know that, as well as if Telework is not installed at all. So that's what you're going for right there. Uh, get that not installed. There are, of course, situations where we get it. Um, maybe it's a custom module that's been installed and incredibly complex, and the cost of getting its Telework dependency removed is, is going to be you know astronomical. It takes time, but as much attention that can be given to those kind of things. We just cannot stress enough how important it is to have no of the old DNN Telric um, uh, on a website. Um, you just run away too, too high of a risk uh, with it even there, whether it's used or not, just its presence provides too many um, vulnerabilities. So I, you know, I, since I'm using this article, I'll take the opportunity to, to really just verbalize this to the testing that went on prior to this official release was incredible. And uh, if you were involved in that testing in any shape, form, or fashion, thank you so much because the issues that came in, uh, I, how many release candidates do we actually have for this? It was 
a lot. Um, poor Daniel. <laughs> he was constantly kicking off a new uh, build to put it out there for people to uh, to see the changes and test those changes. But so many people were able to uh, to test scenarios out and, and all that. And it was really, really helpful. I, I believe we had more testing activity for this re release than we've ever seen in the history of, you know, the community kind of uh, running the platform side of things. So thank you if you did that. Um, any questions really about all this before I fire up an instance here and kind of take a tour through a few of these? Uh, not really much conversation happening in chat. Uh, they were talking a little bit about uh, some of the things you've mentioned, but uh, I think you're in good shape. Did a good job of putting everybody to sleep, right? With my <laughs> spoken voice and uh, lullaby kind of. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you, can you start over? I dozed for a minute. <laughs> nah, come Could on. you just repeat this that? This is good stuff. <laughs> Which part? Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I would watch a rerun of the resource manager. Just that part alone is the most beautiful thing ever. That's good to hear, Ryan. Here. Uh, Absolutely. Daniel was, uh, he'll hear the we, replay. We can. Now, so. We can proudly say that we have a fresh new resource manager and the old file manager, um, not the top gap in the middle, but the, just the old file manager has been the same thing for so many years that it was in the running with the uh, Windows calculator as the oldest untouched item still shipping with a modern platform. So um, you know, very, very excited to have that. That's awesome. So yeah, about as useful as Clippy, the old one was. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I I wish Daniel was here so I could really kind of uh, say this with him him here. But it, you know, if next time you're talking to him, really, I don't think most people realize how much work went into just this part of it alone, and most of that was on Daniel's um, shoulders, and uh, he just did an excellent job, in my opinion, um, uh, through all of this, and um, just be sure to thank him, and better yet. Heck, if you could throw a few bucks at him on a, a GitHub sponsors, that's, that would be awesome too. Because I mean, he did it as a work of passion, knowing that it was needed in DNN, but it was no small feat. Um, I don't know the actual number of hours. There was a portion of that work that, by the way, I should mention again because uh, maybe a lot of people don't know this, but um, uh, Mitch Sellers and Iowa Computer Gurus was able to uh, sponsor or do a bounty uh, for a portion of this. You know what, now that I'm thinking about it, I am pretty sure I saw a new blog. Yep, here it is, a new blog post uh, by them. If you haven't seen this, um, I'll post that in the chat, but go take a look at it because they, they actually did a write up on this to you know, just really talk about how you can how you can support open source without, you know, writing code and stuff, you know, and this is a situation where they had clients that needed this. Mitch knew how bad it was needed, you know, to be able to remove Telric. I mean, there was just so many benefits to being able to sponsor this. And this is not just about sponsoring just this one thing, but uh, it's a good, good read uh, through here. Um, give you some good ideas on kind of how to be involved and, in, and in, um, contributing for this but anyways back to kind of daniel's you know the the level of work that went into this was you know far beyond that that bounty and that's not to minimize the bounty but it's just to to highlight how much work really went into this and the number of hours so be sure to at least thank him i try to every chance i get with that okay let me let me hush and uh <laughs> go ahead and install dnn 911. so this would obviously be a clean install um for this and uh hey david not to make you sidetrack but what is that cool application you're using somebody created this cool thing that lets me do this in like a less so cool <laughs> we we love envy quick sight <laughs> i you know i keep forgetting you know that a lot of people still don't know about it but it's like oh my gosh we use this like multiple times every day so you know it's paid for itself over and over again for us now, you know, I didn't mention this because I didn't because I'm dumb. 
But um, <laughs> one thing that you're going to notice with 9-11 is this is extremely fast. Um, and, and I'm not just blowing smoke here. You're going to see in a second. I mean, yeah, this is a local instance, but I guarantee you a 9.10.2 going through this and then you turn around and do 9.11 if you put these side by side. You're going to see here, it, it is ridiculously fast. So let me just put a password in here and we, oops, if I could type. Okay, let me, I'll just leave it at that for now. And then we'll just do so broad. Man. And here is where I was mentioning, you know, where you could, you have the option of going ahead and making it secure right from the, from the beginning. Now this is a local instance, so I'm, I'm not wanting to do that. So I'll have to jump through a few more hoops um, to make that work. Um, and I'll just use the default website. Now, maybe quick site already has the database information uh, put in here. So we don't really have to do anything there. So I'm gonna click continue. Now watch this. Remember in the past, you like sit and wait at 18% forever and forever. Now watch it make a, a liar out of me. Wow. Okay. So normally you challenge this it. is, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Normally this happens. Uh, I must be running something. It may just be the live stream that's doing it. Now that's a lot faster. Yes. But my normal install takes less than eight seconds. Wow. That was fast. 19. Yeah, it's 19 seconds. Um, so already you're seeing a lot, but that normally for me when I do a clean install it is eight seconds. It's crazy. It doesn't even do the hanging. Um, whereas in a lot of the previous uh, versions, it just would hang on 18% while it does a lot of that churning. The best thing that we can figure, like it, it wasn't a specific um, initiative to, um, to make things better performing. Of course, there's always an a, a attention to that at a certain level with anything that we do is performance, but it wasn't like, a you know, oh, we're trying to make this a lot faster. Um, the biggest thing that we can attribute this to is that Petapoco, which is the underlying data access layer, um, you know, um, for Dow2, right? That was updated um, with a minor version update. And evidently, there was quite a bit of performance improvement in just that. So that's uh, kind of how we're how we're attributing a lot of it to it. Of course, the removal of Telerik doesn't hurt either. Now, this speed here is just uh, IAS kind of cycling up. Um, that's normal for it to be slow. But yeah, like just being able to to jump around and stuff in here, you'll just see that it's just so so much faster. Um, things that normally would just take a lot longer, um, just are super fast. So let's hit the extension screen. What was that, right? I'm sorry, I missed it. I said hit the extension screen. Oh yeah, sure. Boom. Yeah, that's fast. I'd also like to mention something that I'd like some backup on. I've only got one site where I actually took the time to make notes and test this. But running an IIS, when you get your details on your um, running instances, I've noticed that a production running site that we've got upgraded is using at least 30% less memory footprint for, per day. I don't know what to attribute that to, but it's noticeable. Interesting. Yeah. I'd like One to of the... If anyone else knows one of the off the cuff uh, things that Mitch had said was that you're going to see performance and speed improvements here, and they weren't the the goal or the target. But you know, with the update and cleanup of some of these different things that were involved, you're going to see something like eighty percent speed and performance improvements. Yeah, I have I have a site. It was always had a memory footprint of over five hundred meg. And it's easily floating in the high 300s now. Wow. I don't know what to attribute it to, but it's certainly the upgrade. If anyone else experiences that, I'd like to hear why someday. That makes me want to go and uh, take a look at some of ours. No, I was it was really, it was a lot of curiosity for me. I'm like, hey, this is cool. What were you upgrading from, Jeremy? Just out of curiosity, what level? Uh, uh, 991, I think, 
was where I was at. And every single day that thing was gobbing at five or 600 megabytes. And um, anyhow, now it's sitting floating comfortably at 380 and sometimes it hits 400. Nice. Well, I was just, I probably should have prepared a little bit more, but uh, I was looking for some images here that I could uh, show you kind of experience them. Yeah, I only have a few. Um, so I, I don't know how deep you guys want to go, but uh, just tell me if I start boring you to death. But um, some of the things that I was talking about, just like, you know, depending on where you're at, notice the toolbar as I'm, you know, doing different things. And I just selected this, you know, or I right click on it. Um, this matches this. So depending on kind of what your preference is on how you like to work, you've got multiple paths to the same end. Um, you can now do multi-select with items. Ooh, that's the best thing ever. Changes, you know. You, as wait, well. people, are you holding down the control key? No, I'm just clicking. Oh, really? Yep. So again, a lot of these cues are from, you know, the, the OneDrive experience. So you can, uh, you can see a lot of parallels to there, you know, and being able to go. No different views that's, well. that's good. Before you, when you clicked on it, it would automatically download the file. I'm like, and I don't want that. I just <laughs> want to select it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, you know, things like moving files, you know, I can now move multiple files, just like you could do with the other, but when you move, you can choose exactly where you want it to go to. Um, and so, of course, we can move these control. to the site group. Pretty web controls. So now those files should be sitting in the root, and there they are. So now we can grab those and move them back to images and move. And yes. And now we're back into uh, images. So selecting it or being able to you know, go into it. This is one thing that you will probably run into that we, we have it on the radar. You might be tempted to just double click on a folder and expect it to go into the folder. It won't work that way right out of the box. Um, you have to actually select the folder over here. So these are kind of your folder actions over here and this is what you see. So you have access to see the folders, but this is where you're just gonna select them or you know, do, do actions on them. Um, so double click is not something you can enable. It, we will, but right now it does not do double click. That okay. was in the nice to have column instead of required column. Because if you remember correctly, this didn't even like work this good, you know, in the other <laughs> the the other experience. Hey, could you sort something out for me? I know that we've talked about the CK editor now can on upload of an image resize it. That does not apply to this resource manager at this time, right? That's correct. Okay. Yep. That'd be a nice to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, paid, paid support for new feature requests. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. That is uh, an interesting one. Uh, let's see. So like just being able to edit, you know, folders and files, you get a similar experience. It's just that now you, you're not dealing with the dnn pop-up model you know with jquery ui you're dealing with um, just pure web components this could use a little bit of tlc as far as look and feel and the jumping around and things like that but the feature parity is there um so being i've heard rumors that aaron is going to do a complete tailwind version of this <laughs> 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 i knew that would make him come online <laughs> So, you know, just being able to rename things, you know, here's the same way that it, that it was in the other, you would change the name here. Um, let's see, uh, cancel out of that. What, what else? Um, I was hoping to, to upload like a bunch of images. Uh, I think I'm going to be on the edge here and I'm going to just try to put some images here that I have no idea what these images are. They're screenshots of something. So if you see something uh, that uh, is suspicious or not so great, just ignore it. I don't even know what's in here. Um, but I want to show a feature here. So let's go into the images folder. And I'm just going to um, add, 
let's see, where was I at? I've got an item selected. So add or upload, sorry, upload. So you've got this nice drag and drop experience here now. So I can just drag those from a, from my Windows Explorer over to here. You still have the extract, but notice that every file had a progress bar like before. And once it gets processed, they disappear. So those got uploaded. Um, the Did I just mess it up? Because they shouldn't have. They should have seen the complete. Huh, I thought we changed that. Anyway, they got uploaded. So there they all are. Now, I'm going to do it again so that we get a bunch of files in here. Um, so I got a chance to, oh, oh yeah, so these already exist. So I need to, oh, shoot, I'm going to have to rename these or something. Oh, uh, how can I do this? Um, I don't want to overwrite. Was batch file renamer and rename your file supposed to pick up? Yeah, I was trying to think of how I could do this really quick. I wanted to get over like, you know, 100 images in there. Let me see if I can find some more here real quick. So I don't have that problem. Um, let me go. You could select all and delete the ones up on the server and then do it again. Yeah, but I really want that many files in there. Um, oh. Let me just find some other files here real quick. Give me just a second to look over here and see what's relatively safe for me to put up here. <laughs> Let's see here. I've got a bunch of images over here. Okay, this will this will do it. I've got a crap load of images. All right, let me do upload, and I'm just going to drag them all in here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. So, yep, as it gets done, um, that's something I'd like to improve. But now we've got, uh, let's see, let's go back to here so I can recap. Okay, so we've got 100, we got 237 images here. Did you notice how fast that was? And some of these are, most of them are very large, two, three megabytes. Four megabytes. That was pretty fast, huh? Mm -hmm. Now you may be saying, well, okay, so I get a thousand of them out here. How fast is that going to be? Well, now it says 381 because guess what just happened? It lazy loaded as I'm scrolling down all those files. So if I go down to the bottom, look, it's pulling other ones in. Now we've got 400 of them. That looks like it's a little bug there to me but super fast. So it only loads and shows the number of them that you're, you know, th that you're needing at the moment. But when you get to a certain spot on the page, it will lazy load the rest of them. So it's, it's a lot more performance oriented than, than before on this, just super fast. So like, and also the search. Yeah, see now, I think it was in the process of still indexing those files because I uploaded so many of them. <laughs> so now the count is actually up to 1,034. So now if I go down, um, we'll get more accurate numbers because I think DNN was in the process. Yeah, see how it is? Yeah, it's just, it's loading 100 of them at a time, right? As I'm going down. So now we got 1,034 files loading just like that. So it's pretty cool. So if I wanted to look for something, let's say uh, 2019 underscore something. Uh, let's see. What is it? Dash something. Yeah. So everything from January 2019. The search is instantaneous as I'm typing, you know, to get to get down there. So pretty neat. Um, synchronization, uh, being able to sync just this folder or refresh the files that are in the folder or sync this folder and subfolders. Those work the exact same way that they worked before. It's just that now they're in a nice little contextual menu there. Um, being able to, uh, there's so much in here. This don't take too much time, but uh, it has an awareness of the file types as well and shows you an icon as well as it can. Now, these are the old icons. So that's one of the things we want to kind of improve the look and feel of it at some point to get a little bit a better, more modern experience there. 
Um, but it's fantastic. It even supports the different folder types, you know, like uh, being able to use like Azure folder provider. So if you if you did a connector over here and tied it into an Azure storage or some other, you know, like let's say you're using Eva Tivo's um, DNN storage module and it's tied into AWS or whatever, those are going to show up right. over here like you would expect uh, them to show up and be able to see those uh, those folders just as well. Uh, let me see, Rudder, you said, uh, can can you, I'll show, can you show the edit button? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's multiple edits uh, there. So like if I'm here selected on a folder, there's an edit here. And that's uh, similar to what I showed before, where you can set the permissions and change the name of the folder and get all the information associated with it. There's also the edit for a file which is contextual or here, and those result in the same thing. So if I select this one, go edit, then you're gonna get be able to change the name of the file, which in this case is a crazy name. Um, you can update the title and description for that file. So if it's being used, you know, as a, as a link to the resource, it would have that in there for the uh, link click. Did that show what you wanted to see there? If you edit the text file, well, I would have to upload a text file in order to see what happens when you edit the text file, but um, it's the same experience. Um, what about the type CSS really file in the group? So it's going to be the same experience. Um, file type doesn't have any real bearing. On this one here, it would just be the editing of the, of the name of the file. So it's not like you're literally editing the file in, in an editor because um, that wasn't possible for either. So. Download is expected, you know, same same way as what you would see before. Uh, deleting a file, it'll prompt you if you're sure you want to delete. Um, another thing is the expand, you know, it can change the size of this based on kind of your viewport and what you want to see. It is where you can collapse that as well by just clicking it. Um, as well as there is a settings here, and this is where you would be able to manage your different folder providers and add or remove those. So if I had an Azure um, folder connector set up over here or connector set up for Azure, then I could add a folder type of, of that here and it would show up. And now this one here is not using web components. This is obviously the DNN um, jQuery UI based um, modal here. Uh, that's one area that didn't get rebuilt completely. So this is the exact same experience as you have before. Um, so if we were adding an Azure folder provider, you can come in here and do that. And those get a slightly different icon associated with them too. So if it is a known folder type, you'll get a, a an icon associated with that. So for Azure, you'll get the Azure logo on, on top of the folder and so forth. And for the most part, it is responsive um, as well um, out of the box. It is also uh, accessible. So if you are, you know, going through this and you want to use your, I'm using my tab and I'll use my up arrow and my space bar to select it. Um, all of that works just fine out of it. Um, every, every little feature of this is completely accessible um, for that. So doing all that with my keyboard. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah, you can download multiple files uh, at the same time. And there I, there I was trying to double click that again. That 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 one's gonna drive me crazy. But yeah, if I wanna, oops, sorry. Select multiple files. Oh, no, you can't. I thought you could. Nope, you can only download one file at a time. That would be a nice uh, improvement there. Somebody should open an issue for that. Could you do that before? Download multiple files at once? No, you couldn't do that before. Oh, okay. No. 
that seems like it would be simple, but at the same time, it probably isn't because <laughs> you got to figure out like, okay, what does that mean? Is it a mo would it zip them up? Yeah, because you only get really one dialogue per thing that you're downloading, right? So it might would lead to a clunky experience. And for everybody that loves the grid view, they're here. Does anyone love the grid view? <laughs> it seems so. like that would be the instant first thing I click on is switch to list view. No. Yeah, and you'll know Only if I don't know what the image is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It is a little helpful with the images uh, to be able to see what they are. But if you're OCD like me, list. you just put names that you know what they are. But most people don't. So it's actually in a way helpful, I suppose. I kind of like the previews. I suppose it depends on how many files you have there too. You know, um, that was a performance nightmare before. Um, it's, it's better now in this one. Um, it still loads pretty fast. True. But you'll notice Very I, fast. Out, notice, uh, I went too far and it went crazy, but yeah, it's, it's loaded all those. So it caught up. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, what 1,034 items there. That's fantastic. Yes, I think this helps solve a lot of the pain points and gets us, you know, to a Telric free DNN. There were other areas that Telric was being used, but this was really the biggest area. Uh, it was the last remaining mammoth in DNN that was relying on it. That looks really nice, David. Yes, thank you, Daniel. I've I've seen a few issues already to to like be able to change the default size of this and stuff like that. Some things that would help, you know, if you've got a lot of files, this is a little short um, for it, especially if you've got a bigger monitor or something. Um, those would be some nice little enhancements that honestly to do stuff like that becomes way less difficult in a solution like this compared to what we had before. So it'd be, it'd be nice. Don't be afraid to, to post issues for things like that. You know, if you see a way that it could be improved, then it's a lot easier to to work on it because it really goes back to being in elements and being able to change those elements to be able to su support those features and so forth. And then it by default will just happen in here. So it's nice. Well, that's really all I had on my list, but I'm happy to dig into any other areas if anybody's interested. I think that the uh, star of the show, the DNN 911, has a lot of nice things that we're looking forward to. Um, file manager and some speed improvements are enough of a reason for me to try and upgrade every single instance, much less uh, final final steps on all those where we've been able to remove Telerik. I can proudly say that it's out. I think this is fantastic. Is everyone else excited about this? Uh, this release, uh, have you already started jumping into two upgrades or is everyone hold, holding their breath for a few moments first? <laughs> I've jumped in with both feet. I'm kind of wondering though, what's left for version 10? This was so, so much stuff. Yeah, now we get to dream a little bit. Um, a lot of 10, I know that's already, you know, on the radar is removing a lot of uh, the APIs that were marked uh, for for deprecation um, to go away in 10. So a lot of that will be, you know, obviously things that are behind the scenes that you won't really see, <laughs> you know, or, or feel, but that should help in other ways uh, with that as well, removing dependencies, things like that. Um, but now we get to dream a little bit. What's, what, what, what do you, what do people want? Um, I know one of the hot, Items is uh, a new theme uh, by default uh, to, to be in DNN, and uh, <laughs> that's a, uh, a philosophical battle uh, with those that are, <laughs> that are within that of what that needs to look like. Um, everybody has their uh, their opinions on, on 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 what's the right way to to go. So I think we'll probably be a quick thing. Uh, uh, just uh, I'd like to start with that. 
I'd like to nominate Aaron for the next theme creation using Tailwind as a dependency. <laughs> did, did you hear the part where I said we're removing dependencies? <laughs> <laughs> did you think maybe I did that on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> no, and honestly, that's, I mean, in my opinion, you know, and this is where, you know, the philosophical battle comes in a lot of times like I, I i'm all for that except for when it comes to design right you know I, I, if you can leverage a framework to get there quicker and more consistently consistently then i'm i'm a little more for it now by default you know the current well theme in dnn is uh bootstrap dependent but it's stuck at bootstrap three and we're on bootstrap five it is now. so yeah <laughs> um, it's time for an update so, whether that's bootstrap and or tailwind or nothing um you one of the things that's been you have to have to an, different ones you know and to have different options available nothing nothing sounds yes there you go that's what i was going to say why not have multiple options and there's obviously got to be one that's on when you do a fresh install but you go into themes and a you haven't included uh dark knight and gravity and zillion so you've got you know, the default one and, oh, look, you've got two other options. The same exact thing now in Tailwind. The same exact thing now with Bootstrap 5. Love it. Yeah, and I love the idea of having one that has no framework, you know, so like. Yeah. Like, it's a fan of, you know, some people are a fan of that, you know, just pure CSS or um, just, yeah. It, it really comes yeah. down to who's willing to contribute and all being on the same page with the same directive, you know? So I love that idea too, right? I think it would be great to have the same exact design, same exact content, everything, but done three different ways, you know, or whatever uh, ways. But that therein lies a bit of a problem too, you know, it's like, well, by the nature of the framework itself, your design might would be impacted a little bit, you know? Um. <laughs> yeah, you can't achieve everything in the same way, so. Just yeah, because like, you know, you have they're all sisters. Uh, for instance, if it was designed, you know, in a way that was based off of a, you know, a bootstrap framework, you know, it, you might want to do it a little bit different because like it would be harder to achieve pixel perfectness like you could with Tailwind because you have all those utility classes, you know, so it, it's easier said than done, but it can be done. Um, a little bit of coordination, a little bit of willingness, and some uh, muscle to, uh, to crank it out. Yeah, I saw the uh, idea there for the themes contest. I think that's kind of how this one came about a bit. Um, so that could be good. Um, if it's open-ended, it will be tough because probably nobody's going to create three themes and using two frameworks and no framework. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> but having a design contest for what this homepage should look like would be really great out of the box. Hey, all of us business owners, we have an infinite amount of time available, right? That's right. That's right. And employees and interns. Hey, we'll get it done. Thank you, Jeremy, for uh, volunteering to uh, do that. <laughs> I'm going to sign off now and you're never going to see me. <laughs> uh, well, great, everyone. I'm glad that uh, glad we were able to show some of this. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And, and more so than that, I hope it encourages you to upgrade quickly. Please get her done. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think that the pain of upgrades is lessening and lessening over time and that some of the hoops and that we jump through and hurdles that we'd encounter when we were, oh, you know, manually upgrading TN3 and TN4 and, and replacing files and overriding them and taking this out, running it, putting this back in. It's just gotten easier and easier as it goes. And, um, your articles for telework removal, just make it so very straightforward to do step at a time, not difficult. That's the most tedious thing we've done in ages. So once we get past that, everything else is, is smooth, right? That's right.
Yeah, I think the most um, scary thing is how many steps it's taken to learn this stuff and how much easier it's gotten. I still, I don't know if you guys are the same way, but I still look at the step by step every single time because it's easy to accidentally yeah. skip a step. Um, so I, I, I'm waiting for someone to automate it in PowerShell, but it's okay to just read and follow the steps. Well, now it's automated in the DNN 911 upgrade for you. So that is essentially what is happening. It's literally doing those things uh, in there and then some. So it's, uh, there's your tool. David, I think it's related to birthdays too. Uh, what was that, Dennis? I'm sorry, you said that. Uh, I, I said, I think it has something to do with being related to birthdays as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope everybody has a good upgrade experience. Uh, of course, if you do run into any challenges, I mean, I, as always, back up your <laughs> sites and test in an environment that's not production uh, first so you can be prepared. But I hope everybody oh, has a good experience. Don't if you don't, don't just back up, get good at restoring. Yeah, there you go. Understand the process, All right? There's, there's a couple little glitches that have been found since in the this latest version, any plan for when sort of a, a tidy up might be done? Yeah, I know that there's quite a few issues that have been posted out there, Steve, already on GitHub. Um, it's a, I, there's no specific time frame. It's whenever people have the uh, uh, bandwidth to be able to actually implement fixes for those things. So I think as soon as those pull requests come in, you know, that will, that'll, pushed along that happening quicker rather than later. Um, it's just a matter of people contributing uh, to it. Just everybody keep in mind, there's no corporation sitting behind or anybody getting paid to uh, do any of this. <laughs> so, um, you know, if anybody has a way to help uh, one oh, way or another, you know, I mean. Also re highlight one thing to kind of uh, get people to upgrade. I was personally surprised by how many critical updates appeared to apply to 9.10 point whatever. Uh, people need to pay attention to that, that it's worth upgrading. I think there were worth 10 or so security. Yeah, I think there's like 12 or 13 security bulletins with this release. So, and those are not trivial, some of them. So um, it matters, definitely matters. Um, I was going to say, uh, for those of you that joined after we got started, uh, Rodrigo, uh, let's see, uh, Phil and Alessandra, Marco, Ahmed, uh, Benny, thank you guys for attending. Uh, hope you found it valuable. It's good to, good to see your names pop up. I think we should also uh, get everybody to try and do a round of applause for Daniel, because even though he's not here, it feels like he was a big part of 9-11. We need to do absolutely. Everybody, everybody use your reactions on uh, Zoom to do collapse, and I'm going to take a screenshot and send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to – I don't know if I'm publishable. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, we got to time this. I have, I have to blur. Do not look at the boxes. I'll be like this. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I will do a screenshot. There it goes. I got the screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Did I brush my hair? I don't even know. Whatever. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Yeah. I'm well, thinking folks, I normally stay till the end, but unfortunately, I have to run early right now. So uh, love you, everybody. Good to see you. I will talk to everyone again soon. Thank you, David, for an awesome run through. I took a bunch of notes. Uh, we'll try and post ASAP up to the site. Yeah, we'll do that. We're, we're wrapping up here anyways. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recorded part yep, yep. of the session. And uh, Ryan, thanks so much. I appreciate everything you do. I hope you have a better week than it's been. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll try and work on that. Yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks, everyone. See you the too. recorded portion. Bye.